Tribal. Super Tommy Tribal. Oh, oh, he is a meal for Maestro. Oh, 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 he never gives the ball away. One, Hello, two, three, four. and welcome back to another TNZ podcast. <laughs> this is the East Anglian Derby review special of some sort. And look, we've got the small matter of Arsenal away to look ahead to as well. But we thought, why not? Commemorate this is a commemorate. I was died here. Uh, well, Ipswich. Mate, what died. a win! Yeah, mate. What? A win. What? what a, and then let's get this out early doors as well. Yeah, I sound like my throat's about to collapse. <laughs> you don't sound much better, or, or if if worse, maybe. I went to work this morning and I said hello, and I just kind of squeaked. <laughs> so, um, excuse me for all the podcast listeners if you can't hear anything halfway through. <laughs> it's gone. It's, it's gone already. <laughs> but you know, it was worth it. The atmosphere was incredible from the Norwich fans. And what a win! And yet again, we are the pride of Anglia. Yeah, I mean, uh, let, let's, let's. You said you said two two, Jack. Yeah, I did. I, I wasn't. Why that are you con- I wasn't that? that confident. Why? It's Ipswich. You, you can't tell me that you. I were... can. I can. Didn't I say to you I was confident? Not once did I say. Actually, I was. <laughs> First you said half, you were a little bit nervous. First half, but oh, before but he that, was it was fine. it the whole of the first half. Yeah, but that was it. That was it. Forty-five Confidence. minutes, half the game. Yeah, it's fine, mate. But um, never in doubt. Let, let's go. Let's go from from the very start of the mm. day because because Derby Day's different in terms of it's always an early kickoff, which means if you're playing away from home, you're getting up very early. Pub. We can talk about the pub. I mean, train on the way. Yeah, train on the way. Great chance on the way on the train. The nine o'clock train, led by our leader, Dave Giles. Yeah. Captain leader legend. What a boy. Dave Giles. And of course, Bradley Snowden, who, rest in peace to his Ralph Lauren hat. It, it, did, did you see and that? And rest in peace to his dignity. He showed off his athlete's body after the game. <laughs> I love that. Um, but yeah, he, he, he was starting chance. The window on the train was open and somewhere between Dis and Stowe Market, his Ralph Lauren hat, which by the way, this is a great story. Go on. He paid for £12.99 next day delivery for so he could get it in time for Millwall away. <laughs> 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 so that hat had cost him nearly 50 quid in total and it's now in, in, in a bush in between Dis and Stowe Market. So rest in peace to Bradley Stanton's Ralph Lauren cap. We won't be seeing that anymore. <laughs> anyway, enough about that, Jack. Come on, we've just won in the derby. Yeah, I mean... Let, let's let's start with let's start with that with the starting lineup. I thought we were going to go through the day. All right, go on then. Pub, pub, great. scenes, yeah, flares, S- smoke bombs. Sorry, smoke yeah. bombs. Um, the person that owned the pub looked like Teresa from Endubs. <laughs> so big shout out to to Teresa. She was a bit of a babe. Um, there was also a very muddy slope which people kept falling <laughs> down. It was brilliant, um, and of course everyone was giving Ipswich fans stick on the way. You know what I did wonder, Jack? Every Ipswich fan that came past the pub was standing there taking pictures like a tourist. It's like kind of, what's it like to see a crowd, really? <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, pub was great. Got to the ground. Uh, to be honest with you, there was, of course there was a few um, scuffles and things. I did think overall the policing was okay. I didn't think there was too much issues. Mm. It was still a bit dodgy. In fact, but... we got trampled by a horse and help. Well, at the start, that was a bit dodgy. But apart from that, them horses were huge as well. Like I'm, I've seen are, a lot of horses in my lifetime. They, are. they were bigger than normal. Yeah, exactly. What? And they were much better than the Ipswich Town mascot who was sitting in the Ipswich end with a horse's head on, drumming. You have a horse that drums. <laughs> my God, Ipswich Town. Could you get more tin pot? Um, <laughs> Should we go through the okay, team? Okay, so we're in the ground. The team is announced. And I thought, I don't know what you thought. Okay. I thought it was pretty much perfect, the team. Actually, if you if you go back to the previous podcast, it's pretty much exactly what we said, mm-hmm. isn't it? We said stick with Cam Jam. Well, I said stick with Cam Jam. Um, you know, we said um, husband might be dropped for Stephen if he's fit. We said that um, you know Ranch shouldn't start and he didn't start. So um, you know, and I think it worked very well. I, I must say, you know, kudos to Daniel Farker, although he made a particular special effort to not take the credit and not come over to mm. the Norwich fans. At the end did of the you game. see where he went though, Daniel? Yes, I did, I did. Um, and that was very nice, of course. But what I mean, Jack, is I think Daniel Farker deserves the credit for getting the tactics absolutely yeah. bang on the money in the derby. I think we I think we sucked up the pressure quite well quite well early doors, of course. Ipswich did hit the post or crossbar, whatever it was, but it was a foul anyway. Um, but apart from that, we looked comfortable really. Yeah, I mean I thought we did look comfortable. Come on, I'm not being too biased. I think, I think in the first half, oh, I don't think you're being biased. I think in the first half they had the better chances though. McGoldrick missed the sitter. 
Um, but we had more chances with them in the, in, we had the more chances well. but in terms of quality but I suppose on the other hand Angus Gunn didn't really make a save not that I can remember anyway no, just down his throat the whole time shots. Um, let's, let's talk about let's talk about Cameron Jerome because Nel- start from the top and work down yeah because okay. Nelson Oliveira was well we found out afterwards that he maybe wasn't as fit as we, as we first thought but everyone thought he was fit and good to well maybe not good to go but he, he we all thought he was kind of good to go. And if we wanted him, we could have started. He opted with Jerome. His goal scoring record has been poor this season, but his performances away from home have been decent on the whole. Very good on the whole. And I thought, I thought at Ipswich, you, you can't knock him. You really yeah, can't Yeah, absolutely him. faultless performance. I, anyone that says Cameron Jerome didn't play well at the weekend clearly doesn't really have that much knowledge of football. I think that he you know, did everything apart from score. He worked so hard. He chased everything. He put them under pressure. You know, not that it's that difficult against a really terrible player like Chambers, but I think that Cameron Jerome, um, you know, showed us all again that, you know, he's a very, very good quality championship player. Um, and I just love the fact that we won the derby without without our our weapon, without our main man, Nelson Oliveira. I think that, that speaks volumes. But no, overall, Jack, ridiculously impressed with Cameron Jerome. I thought he held up the ball very well um, and, and he did a fantastic job. And I think... The thing you say there about chasing kind of lost balls is is even more important in a derby because there are going to be times when mm. we're under the cosh and our defence are just going to have to lump it long. Yeah. And there were numerous occasions when the ball was lumped long and Jerome was never going to get there, but he just gave that little bit of pressure that meant he just couldn't break and yeah. couldn't do things. So it was them little things that... Yeah. Let's work backwards a little bit. Yeah. And I, my only doubt going into the game when I saw that the lineup was both Wes and Madison in the, in the team because... Because I thought possibly, um, you know, before the game, is that a little bit too lightweight? I thought it worked lovely. I thought it was splendid. I thought Wes Hula had put yeah. in, I would say, his best performance of the season. I thought he was absolutely marvellous. Yeah. And, and, and well and he, and he was, and really, Wes is to credit for our goal, I think. Oh, yeah, 100%. It was a great finish. The way, from Madison, the way course, he held but... that ball up with his oh, back to goal brilliant. and just allowed Vilschke, allowed Stieperman, and allowed Madison to break down that left side. Yeah. I thought it was absolutely yeah. superb, and I, and I think that was his best performance in the season because Agreed. there was a real chance that he could have got lost in that game. I think we were massively helped, Jack, by the fact that Ipswich got their tactics wrong, or, or, or did they not have a choice? Because I think that Ipswich started with well, there's like three up top. Yeah, McGoldrick, Garner, and uh, yeah. and Waghorn. That's that's bold. They did have to do that. In fairness to Mick McCarthy, but. When you've got three up top, you're going to have to sacrifice further back in the field. And I think we absolutely overran them in midfield. I mean, they were never going to get him. We'll go on to try, but we won't touch him yet because there's going to be lots and lots of praise for him. But I just think Wes and Madison were, were perfect together. And I'd really like to see that partnership flourish. It's going to be very, very interesting when Pritchard comes back. Um, so, I mean, should we let's let's go back through it then. So, should we start with, we, we've mentioned Wes. We'll now see Madison. Yeah. I, I I think that performance just sums up what 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 bloody fantastic player he's. We we knew he had quality. We knew he he was a special player. But once again, for me, it comes back to his his, his absolute maturity. I think his post match interview summed him up. He's a, he's a very eloquent talker. He's very very young. Let's not forget as well. Yeah. To go, he, he's pretty much single handedly now won us three of the last five away games in yeah. Middlesbrough, yeah. Reading, Ipswich. The way it was that spark of quality that an East Anglian derby was always looking for and in previous seasons hasn't had that. And Madison provided yeah. that spark of quality that ended up being the difference. I mean, in all honesty, Jack, that goal against Ipswich, it was, it was a great finish. But actually, it was a bigger occasion. But actually, his goals against Middlesbrough and Reading were better. Uh-huh. And, you know, were against you know much bigger sides. Um, but obviously, the, the occasion was massive and... He said at the end, of, of course, it was his favourite goal because his family were there. And I love to see that. And I just think, yeah, as you say, Jack, that that special touch from Madison. I mean, you know, I've been rimming him since day one and he absolutely deserves it. I think that if we can keep his feet on the ground, I think that he could... Well, I mean, look, I'm not over it by saying that Madison is already a fan favourite instantly after Middlesbrough, confirmed at Reading, and now, quite frankly, becoming like one of the top players of our, our football club because he's scored against Ipswich. And, and I think it's very tough in football players, but you see it, you see this trait throughout all of the greatest football players that you need that almost arrogance, but the the the, the kind of, I don't know what, 
the humbleness to keep your feet on the ground and to keep working harder. Madison is the type of player, and I think you can always know when you've got a good player, when all opposition fans hate him. He mm-hmm. was given it this. Yeah. He knows how to wind opposition fans up. He's done, he done it against Middlesbrough. It's not just the fans. Done it against, um, Let's take the fans Sheffield out of it, United. Jack. Let's take the fans out of it. He actually knows how to wind up the players. Mm. Okay? Most foul player on the pitch every time he plays. And I'm sorry, James, I've said it before, but long may it continue because they're fouling him because he's a danger. He's too good. He twists and turns. Yeah, as the Norwich fans sung to Ipswich, he's just too good for you. Mm. Um, so, yeah, Madison. Uh, Yannick oh mate I, th- I, I love you You guys all know you know that I love Yannick yeah. Wojcicki I thought that performance at the weekend summed them up ripped them to shreds ripped I, I, them to shreds I think he's very very close to being a 10 out of 10 player for us I think that you know don't get me wrong he absolutely played Ipswich off the park at the weekend and I'm not going to take anything away from that I still felt in the first half he could have been a bit more, a, a bit better at the yeah, final, final third is, 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 the, the, the final product is still lacking but I thought that the amount of work that he put in just kind of will ignore that um, and obviously he played a huge part in, in the goal as well um, and just I, for me I think that Yannick played very well by the way love his boots all black. He's got a new haircut as well. New haircut, all black boots. He's an absolute beast. I don't think we miss... Um, I think that when Dykes went, people were concerned that we didn't have a battering ram. Because mm. in the championship, to have a battering ram, that works well. But look, he was a steam train at the weekend. Anyway, other side. No, I th- I th- just quickly finishing on, on Yannick, I think... Okay. It, I kind of go back to this drone point about in a derby that there's times in the games where your maybe defensive midfielders or attacking players have had to drop off a little bit yeah. to, to win the ball. You give the ball to Yannick, he can run 50 yards on his own. It relieves pressure. Even if it doesn't amount to anything, it relieves Who that cares? pressure. Yeah. And, uh, and look, his, his run pretty much created the goal. Although I did think him and Stiegman had screwed it up a little bit before the pass. By the way, Stiegman... Quite strange performance at the weekend. I think that was the only kind of questionable performance. And that was what I said to you in the first half, Jack, is I think... St- you know, my only negative um, for the weekend was I thought that Steedman floated dangerously out of position a wee bit too much. You know what I, I compare it to? I think he's playing... I don't think he's... A, he's, he's not a left-back. I very much compare it to Pinto's early days at right-back, where you knew that yes. there, was, there was a good player okay. there. Okay. And he... it Look, it, I, I think in Steedman's head he was playing left wing at the weekend. Yeah, agreed. there were... He just so wanted many... to bomb forwards all yeah. the time. I was like, this is the derby, man. Cover your back. But no. And especially in the first 20 minutes, um, Waghorn, although he didn't do anything with it, was getting a lot of joy out on that right-hand side, which yes. Stephen should have been. Yes. And Close was having to pull over. Yeah. And that was the only Zimmer time I was having to pull over. But um, look, he's, he got the assist. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, exactly. And, so we can't criticise and, and too much. a decent play. Now, I think what really won us the game at the weekend was them players in behind Tribal. the attacking midfielders. The pairing of Thomas Tribal and Harrison Reed. So thought, much energy from Reed, first and foremost. Like, he was excellent. Like, really... 10 out of 10? No, I wouldn't go that far. Really? What did he do wrong? Well, nothing, but is that... Okay, well, go on then. What did he do wrong? <laughs> 10 out of 10 didn't score a hat-trick. 10 out of 10 performance from Reedy. Brilliant. Yeah. Energy, chasing everything down, giving, tackling the right areas... Perfect. Yeah, and I, th- I think when, when Alex Tete was ruled out injured for a month, two months, we still don't really know the, the, the longevity of that. But there was questions, would Harrison Reid be able to jump in? Was there? Yeah, I think there was. Why? because well, He's, the he's last... at Southampton, mate. The pedigree's there. Of course he can. Mate, you can't say that Harrison Reid's performance in Millwall was good. And I'm None just, of them were, Jack. No, I'm just saying that there was questions after Alex Tete performing so well. Could, could okay, that could. Was yeah. Harrison Reid going to come in and fill that hole? And I think after this weekend's performance, we know that we already kind of knew it, but we've got a very classy player on our hands yep. there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then, uh, and then Tom Tribal. Oh, my God. First of all, the charm. Yeah. Big Love charm. the charm. And I think, you know, I think it was Dave Giles who started it away at Middlesbrough. Fair play. What a charm. I think charm. it was Dave Giles. Definitely stolen it, but who cares? Oh, who bloody cares? Great charm. Love it. Um, I, um, I'm i sorry to name drop. I was, um, so I texted Angus after the game saying, get the fuck in, lad. Send. And I said to Angus, so you know when you pulled over Tommy Tribal afterwards and said, no, they're singing about you. I said, did he understand? And he was like... TBH, mate, not sure, but hopefully. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> but love it, but love it. Was it was one of my favourite moments, because uh, first, uh, you know what, I get a bit emotional, just thinking about them players coming over. Oh, that moment. It means so much. 
I honestly, right, I'm seriously, I'm an emotional person. I genuinely had a tear in my eye when they came over. When Timmy Close came up and gave it large. Oh, oh. Harrison Reed as well. Let's not oh. forget, this is a man who's on loan. He just, he was he's just absolutely so in. loving it. The vibes were so strong. But my favourite moment of that was when Angus got, the, the, the whole of the away end burst out in that Tom Tribal. It was, it was echoing around yeah. the away end. yeah. And I don't think Tom Tribal knew what we were seeing yeah. because I, and he I was don't know about his Engl- yeah. English. And I just got him like this, yeah. pointed to him, and was kind of like like, like this. And, and then Tom Tribal just broke out dancing. And then he did a bit of that. Didn't and I he? loved it. I loved that. Class. I loved that. Class. But I'm starting to question whether that man's human because he doesn't get tired. Jesus Christ, Jack! He, he didn't make a single mistake all game. He headbutts everything. He, he just we, throws his head at things. Honestly, I th- I honestly thought he's lost this ball, but it's, he still managed mm. to win it on numerous occasions. The man is just... Uh, seriously, I'm going to say it like... Uh, we really need to get that guy down on the contract ASAP. Mm. It's a, it, it, oh, I mean, jeez. It is the player that we've been longing for for bloody ages. Because we, we tried to deploy this, this same formation under Alex Neal and it didn't work. One, because we had a shambolic defence. But maybe that was because we didn't have... We didn't protect de- it. We didn't protect it. Tommy Tribal, great player. Next players, let's go through them. Pinto. Eva Pinto. Captain's performance. Mm. Brilliant. Mm. Especially in the first half, Jack, I thought that he, he brought so much solidity and um, I think he just, he absolutely bossed it, really. I think that's, that just summarised Pinto's performance. He just bossed it. And he bossed it in a very classy manner. And at the on end, and and just the, the fans again at the end, just Evo, Evo, and he was giving it large and giving it that and just, oh... It's just beautiful. And I thought he handled the situation, considering he's never captained a, a derby before. Yeah. It was a t- it was a tough build up for him because he had Nelson's comments, his best mate, giving it big. He yeah. had Luke Chambers' comments to deal with. He went about it in a very mature, very classy manner. And I don't expect anything else from Ivo Pinto, but I thought he handled the situation exceptionally well. Yeah, as he does with all situations, Jack. Timmy K smashed it. Yeah, and and you said this was the test for him. Yeah, yeah, and and he's passed. Well done, Tim. He's passed. You, you're I think, through. I think he's absolutely learned all of his lessons from last season. Because you the, said the you season... wanted to get rid of him. Uh, I in pre-season. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. And he, and he's changed my mind, and I'm and I'm allowed to change yeah, my mind. And I'm sure that there's plenty of other Norwich fans that saw the article of of, of Timmy flirting with leaving the club in the Swiss press. Yeah, I still don't think that's on, but I think that that, that Timmy K has handled himself exceptionally well. I think he's put in the performances to back it up. Um, you know, I apologise to Tim Close. Um, not that he's listening, um, but you know, sometimes as a football fan, you've got. A, Hold your hands up and say, you know what, I was wrong about him. And but but I'm really pleased. Mm. I'm so pleased. And let's not forget the season before, um, Daryl Murphy absolutely smashed him to smithereens. In fairness, um, but anyway, and actually, and so Zimmerman smashed it until he got injured. Unfortunately, Hanley, Rod Hanley comes on. Hanley came on, and all of a sudden we had Blumen Pele in defence. He's quick. What? Honestly, Jack, he's really cool. Was he wearing orange boots as well? I think so. I mean, come on. You know what I loved about Hanley is you can tell he was clearly a bit rusty, but when he, like... Could he, you? Yeah, he was a little... On the floor, he was a little bit, but what I was going to say is, if it, there was a couple of like times he miscontrolled it, and he'd just, he just go in with his head, even yeah, if he was on the floor. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. just chucking yeah. his body out, and I bloody love that. You can fix your head, you can fix your nose, but you can't fix your pride. And, that, good, <laughs> and, and that, good and Stick that on the wall. And good on Hanley, because he was... Blooming brilliant. Yeah. And actually, what a fantastic player to have in the armoury, ready for when we have an injury, because we are going to have an injury, because it looks like we've got a, a set defence now. So one of them are going to get injured soon enough, enough or later. Right, we've spoken about Marco Stieperman. Yeah. Jimmy, husband. Oh, my God. The man came on, and I honestly thought he was going to smash the, 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 the First guy First touch. I thought that the, the yellow and green pants, which, by the way, I wore, which, by the way, we won in again, um... I thought he was going to slash it home, but he passed it, unfortunately. But the man just makes me... Oh, the man just... He's just a great player, is this? He? Has there anyone? Has there ever been anyone in your life that you've hated so much and then gone on to love so much? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate him. No. I never hated him, and you no. didn't ever... You never hated him either. That's I'm the wrong lover, word. I think, I think we both just seriously questioned his football ability. Again, he's proved us wrong. He's proved a lot of Norwich fans wrong. And he came on and, and did a, a good job. So well done, husband. Angus Gunn. Angus Gunn. 
All I'm going to say is just just that. Epitomise epitomise what it means to to Norwich City fans to win a derby. He knows what it means. He gets it like a lot of the team, and that means more than anything to fans. I think when yeah. you've got players, you get it. There's a there's a there's a picture of of literally. I remember watching um, watching the game where we won four one at home with Angus. Um, or was it the, t- the game for that that we won? I don't know. We've won so many games against Ipswich recently. Um, and, and, you know, there's a great picture of me, Angus, and his mate, Deck, um, with, with the Ipswich fans, the dejected Ipswich fans in the background. And totally, just I agree with what you're saying, Jack. Angus knows everything. He knows exactly what it means. And, and this is why I'm, I'm such an AG lover. I'm so, I'm so behind the lad. And... Because he knows what it means, and we said it before the Ipswich game, you've got to have players in there that knows what it means, which is why putting Wes in there was the right decision. Yeah. Exactly the right decision. Of course, at the end, gave it large to the Ipswich fans and good because they absolutely deserved it because they were giving him pelts in the first half on the yeah. other side of the stadium. And again, came over the end and, and, and you know gave it the pump and just loves it. And I, and I think although he didn't have too many like big saves to make, I thought he was incredibly commanding with the crosses. Definitely, Jack. Collected there, everything in the air. There, there was a lot of, I think they had a lot of dangerous corners where he just rose above everyone under a lot of pressure. Yeah, he's and, bad. And John Ruddy wouldn't have done that in his last season. No, no I totally chance. agree. So, and, and, and let's also touch on Daniel Another Parker. clean sheet for Angus as well. Another that's one. A, that's another Nando's. That's now seven you owe him. That's getting expensive now, Chris. I mean... To to be transparent with everyone watching and listening, I'm in the I'm in the process of negotiating a deal with Angus. Right, you better give him all of the Nando's. Yeah, all seven, and I am counting. And if you don't, you're sacked. <laughs> it started off as a bit of kind of like I just really wanted him to get clean sheets, but I love it. No, but who cares? I love it. Yeah. So 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 long it, it can continue. Yeah. Uh, and, and rest in peace to your bank balance. Yep. And and and, and big up the Nando's shareholders. <laughs> um, and I'll, I, I do want to touch on on Daniel Farker because I mm. I just think he he was under a bit of pressure in in when we were in the relegation zone. You made there, there, massive pressure. Maybe not so much from Norwich fans. It was a, no 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 there, definitely. No, there, what, and what I'm saying is there was pressure from the Norwich fans, but the neutrals who maybe didn't understand Daniel Farker as much as us mm. looking and going. Well, they've tried to copy Huddersfield. That hasn't worked. You're in yeah. the relegation zone. You're conceding goals. There was pressure on Daniel Farker. And I think not only did he absolutely nail it tactically at the weekend and, and handle the situation impeccably. I was reading an article today. I think it was on The Independent. I apologise. I'm going to link it down in the description because it was a great interview. Now, Daniel Farker, when he finished his playing career, before he finished his playing, his playing career, didn't want to go into management. He wanted to go into a sporting director role. Mm-hmm. He wanted to oversee everything, the finances, the, the contract negotiations. He loves football. He loves the mm-hmm. football culture. And then one thing led to another. He became the sporting director and management uh, staff at uh, Eschi Lipstadt in like the fifth division of German football. Got them promoted. I think it was double promotion. Built them a new stadium. Um, and he... And there were offers coming in from other German clubs before that stadium was built. And he didn't leave because he said he felt a commitment to his people, a responsibility for his people being the fans. And says everything. And the it? reason I love Daniel Farker so much is not only he's, he's got an incredible knowledge for football, and he's a football purist, but this is a man who understands what it means to follow football home in a way. This is a yeah. man who understands... The, the, the value in which Norwich holds in, in this wonderful community in this city yeah. and this is a man who, who who wants excellence and I think when you combine fantastic tactical prowess on the pitch and the ability to build a community and build a Come fan on. base that Come on, Jack. That, that holds the team together and the team resembles the fans Come on, I think you're in a beautiful place there and I think Daniel Fark has done that and maybe not done that yet he's done that but he's building and I love seeing progress, and I love seeing a plan, and I can see exactly that. I am going to have to And I make... think I've got a tear coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to make a very unclassy shout-out to Charlie Wyatt, who said, this will be an absolute miracle if Norwich turn it around now. Well, miracles do happen. And as I've said, time in, time out this season. Please give it until Christmas before you criticise Daniel Farker. You know, of course at Mill we all criticised it and we got angry, but it's part of the journey, embrace it. And I'd be really interested to see 
the fans that wanted Farker out early doors because there was a pocket of fans That's that few, wanted that. Yeah. Um, and obviously, of course, you're going to get that, Jack. But anyway, Farker, very grounded. And of course, at the end, um, yeah, do you want to explain that situation? So, because we, we, we were saying, weren't we, where's Farker? Mm. Because we, I thought Farker was going to be given at the yeah. beginning of the Parker off. But there was a beautiful photo, I think it surfaced from, from Paul Chester to the EDP photographer, who, by the way, there were some magnificent shots so of, of fans at the weekend on the roof and everything. But Daniel Farker basically went to the disabled Norwich City fans, which is in, on the opposite side from the away fans, and was just shaking their hands and, I don't know, having a chat with them yeah. while he let the players who, who'd done the job celebrate in front of the fans. And I thought that that sums up Daniel Farker as a man. I think that sums up the, the team we've got. And It's so nice to have a manager that you actually like as a person. Because, yeah. for example, you look at someone like Sam Allardyce, He's a bit of a dickhead, isn't he? You know, like Mick, Mac- you- <laughs> Mick McCarthy, he's got a bit of banter, but he's a bit of a dick. Um, and, you know, Daniel you Farker's know- just such a genuinely lovely mm. man. He will give anyone the time of day. Yeah. And, you know... Ladies we- and gentlemen. Yeah, at the end, though. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he's just so kind. Anyway, Daniel Farker, yeah. what's next? Um, we- I just want to speak about Daniel Farker all, all day, every day. Soft tones... Mm. Lovely Barnet, mm. generous, mm. runs around Norwich. Just yeah. we we fly, we are flaying, we are flying. I I am go- I, I'm going to wholeheartedly try to get Daniel Farker on this podcast, and I seriously Imagine mean that. The scenes. And I seriously mean that because I think that it would be amazing. Mm. And, and I think the, the final point I want to make on Daniel Farker, and you touched on it a little bit about the Farker out people at the start, and there weren't many, but there were a few. I think I got so angry after that Millwall game, especially. Not so much after Aston Villa, but the Millwall game, because it wasn't so much Daniel Farker. I, I was looking at a group of players that I didn't think necessarily had it in them. Mm. And I think now we're, we're in a beautiful place where, and I don't think this is going to happen, but say if we go three games without a win or something, four games without a win, I know in the back of my head that this group of players They're have it in them. They're capable of doing it again, yeah. And, and, and Daniel Farker knows what he's doing. Yeah. And I think once you've got that trust in a group of players, Mm -hmm. you can achieve great things. The only thing now is our home form. The only thing. And, you know, and to be honest with you guys, you know, if we draw at the weekend, yeah, all right, it's not great. We need to improve our home form. But look, we've won the last five. And actually that goes on to one of the list, you know, the things on the agenda, Jack, quite nicely. Um, David Freezer. Um, <laughs> you went to me before. Write down David Freezer stats. <laughs> just David Freezer stats. He just came out with some absolutely oh, Opta Dave Freezer. Stats. Basically, we've won the record amount of away games on the spin now, haven't we? Since 1988, I think. That's huge. That's absolutely Last huge. Last time that happened yeah. was when uh, Brian Gunn was in goal. And... Look how much of a legend he is. Right, here we go. One moment, guys. I just That's need to hell, Dave Free has been on one. Yeah, today, he loves like. it. Right. So, first of all, he may he 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 said, um, "I make this is now the longest unbeaten run in East Anglian derby history. Nine matches for Norwich City, betters Ipswich Towns eight, dominant." Followed by another classy stat that's it's the first time Norwich have won five away games on the bounce. Since early 1988, in the top flight, 29 years ago. Woof. I love that. All stats people always end or start with one word. Yeah, like I quite like that. Dominance or assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free, and that, and, that's, and that sums up Norwich's performance of the weekend. Big up freezer. Right, so that, that's pretty much Ipswich summed up. And I guess the final thing to say is... Actually, I want to touch on this. Fans on the roof. Make for the most iconic pictures. I love... There were so only, many people. I love it. And it only happens at Ipswich because they've got a tin pot stadium. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, Fair play. Just so... If you haven't been on Twitter for the past couple of days, which I'm sure you have, just... T- I don't know. Type in like the NCFC hashtag. You don't even need to do that because it's been picked up by so many nationals. Yeah. So many good fan pictures of the weekend. Just yeah. so many good pictures. I love yeah. it. And it also means that we're now in the playoff places. Which, considering we were in the in the relegation zone about two months ago, mm. shows what a drastic turnaround has been. Yeah. Uh, right, let, let's, let's quickly touch on this because I do fear that when you're watching this podcast, we would have already played this match. But... Arsenal away mm. in the cup. A massive game. 9,000 fans going. Yep. 
It, I mean, look, Madison said in his interview after the game, we're now full of confidence and we'll go there for the win because what the hell else are we going to do, Jack? Arsenal are obviously the better side. They've, you know, they've just won, you know, considerably well at Everton yeah. or against Everton. Um, and I think, I have a funny feeling they will rest players. I, I do. Oh, I would have thought and, so. And, and I think that, um, I think that Norwich could surprise them. I will be surprised if we win, but I'm not going to write this team off anymore. I'm not going to, simply not going to. I think that we've got everything that that it needs. I mean, oh, and and as well, there's the added thing of the fact that it is Arsenal. We're playing Arsenal. Mm. The likes of Scolzi in midfield, Angus Gunn. These players that are these players that are on loan. There's an extra edge. There's an extra, you know, the the big the big time are watching now. Mm. And I think that there'll be some added spice. Um, and if we win it, all of a sudden. We, uh, we, is, is this a cup run? Would you be satisfied if we went out to Arsenal? I think. I think we're. we're in I a, think I would. I think I'd be okay with going out. Oh, to Arsenal. I think we're in a very lucky position in, in 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 which if we win or we lose, who cares? Yeah. Like, if we win, bloody brilliant. Yeah. If we lose, more time to concentrate on the league and well yeah. done to the lads for going down there and giving it a go mm. and getting this far. Yeah, exactly. And like mm. you say. There is absolutely no reason why we can't win this game. No, exactly. Arsenal are probably going to be resting players. To be, we're in fantastic form. Nine yeah. games unbeaten. If you're an Arsenal fan right you're now, shitting a you're probably looking at an Orange going, "Shit, there's a potential upset here." Mm, definitely, definitely, hundred percent, hundred percent. What what team would you cut? Not the whole team, but are there any players that you'd maybe drop, maybe rest, maybe bring in? Don't really care. I was, I was <laughs> in my preview. I would rest a lot of the players. The league is is. Uh, I know that the cup means a lot to, you know, Daniel Farker. And I love that. I do love that. And I really do want us to go and, and go for it. But to be honest with you, I don't really mind if we drop players. And I don't really mind if we pull a full, if we, if we play a full-strength team. Um, for, for me, I'd like to see Vrancic in there, um, which obviously changes my tune. I just don't think you, you can't play Wes against Arsenal. Um, you, you need to rest him. You need to wrap him up in cotton wool so, he's, so, he, so he can smash it again against Derby. Um, just like he did when Jackson scored the winner in that famous, famous victory. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really mind Jack. I, I was saying in my preview that it's probably already up on the channel, but I think this could be. Well, I think we are going to see Josh Murphy as a as a lone striker in this. Cool, because I think Jerome's dead. <laughs> He's not going to risk Nelson, and if he does, and it's stupid, um, but, stick Murphy in there or Miley Watkins. I think he's still suspended. I might be wrong. But is he not just suspended for the league games? No, it's just League Cup, isn't it? Oh, OK. Yeah. Stick him in there. Anyway, look, 8,800 Norwich fans going absolutely fantastic. Just go and enjoy the occasion. And who knows? It could be a cup upset. And and, and what a fantastic way to enhance this journey that we're and on. And if you are going and we do lose, just enjoy the overpriced pies and, and, the, and, the, and the horrible... And the amount of corporate boxes. And horrible plastic stadium that the Emirates it's a nice stadium but it's dead no atmosphere at all it's dead the seats are nice though they're comfy um, questions yeah 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 you, shall we you get them up on your phone because I'm low on battery and I'm conscious that I've still got to drive there you go, Jack. oh you've got to charge Char- it charge your phone up Jack. Know, top man well, TNC, that's, that's seen better days TNC uh, charger in, in the studio today All right, let me load up these questions I'm asking you the questions today then. Should, oh, we, should we mix really, it up? Yeah, let's do let's let's bloody mix it up. Yeah, why the hell not? You know, it's just like Grant Hanley coming on. You know, yeah. just mix it up. And I'm and I'm gonna come in with a right injection of pace right now. Right, okay. Here we go. Actually, I mean, let's not do it that way. First of all, um Jack Rolo one two three. Great to have. He was WBA for life, West Brom fan. Right. What do you think of the Hawthorns when you came? Uh, I actually, this is a good question because the Hawthorns is my most visited away ground. Yeah. I've been there five times. I've been there three or times. four times. It's easy. Four to or five to, times, it? and we've won every time. It's either the highest. Stadium oh, you in came England, out with this actually, or the lowest stadium in England. I to think sea it's level. the highest above sea level in England, or yeah. something like that. You uh, came out with that bit of trivia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite nice. Anyway, yeah. So I've seen this us. Okay. I saw us winning the cup. It was my actually that was my first ever away game. Okay. When we won in the cup, uh, first proper away game. I saw us then win in the league like three days late. Or oh, was that the following season? 
Been there four times. Seen us Nothing wrong time. with West 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 no. Brom as a club. No. Nothing wrong with them. You know, you know, respect them. West Brom or West Brom. I feel like I feel like yeah 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 West Brom or West Brom just like Birmingham and Birmingham. And to be fair, I think West Brom have been that yo-yo club and, and look where they are now. And I think Norwich can aspire to be West Brom. <laughs> we'll get that far, Jack. Will Burgess. Oh, who I'm love having, him. Who I'm, yeah, I love this guy too because I'm having a business meeting with him uh, this <laughs> week. So shout out to Will Burgess. Um, what is the strangest reason you've heard for a Norwich fan being thrown out of an away match? Now, oh, naughty. This casts my mind back to Snadden <laughs> throwing a burger. Did Bradley Snads throw a burger and get kicked out? I don't... He, No, I don't think he got kicked out. Are you talking about Burton? Yeah. So... <laughs> he just threw a burger at a steward, didn't he, or something? <laughs> this is classic Snadden. No, right, no, go on. So we go, by the way, if you've watched the Magic Experience, you haven't, go watch it. But I came down because you went and bought like a pie or something, which I know has its own story, but we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> I come down and I see Snadden with a cheeseburger in this hand, yeah. a packet of sharing twirls in this hand, mm. a packet of salt and vinegar crisps under his chin, yeah. and a packet of Fanta, a packet, a bottle of Fanta. Under his belly. He went all out. <laughs> Mate, I love Snadden. That's He's a, hero. a top boy. But the story from Burton is that he went down to the concourse at half time. There's yeah. a massive queue. He waited for ages. It was bloody expensive. Hang he on, got... can I just quickly interject? Mm. If you don't know who Bradley Snadden is, just go on the Talk Norwich City podcast question. There's a picture of Snadden with his leg cocked over the uh, the Ipswich roof. Um, he got his belly out at the end. Anyway. We've continue. had him on this podcast. Go and check continue. it out. It's one of the early episodes. So he gets his burger, he gets his chips, he gets his can of drink. Yeah. And I think it was like a tenner. He'd waited the whole of half time for it. He was fuming. He was hungry. <laughs> and uh, he comes back up. I think it was for the second half. Or, or he might... Oh, no. I think he went early... When did Cameron Jerome score? Hang on, first? basically, like, like, come on, we've not got time. Okay. Basically, he scored. We score, he runs down yeah. to celebrate, trips, yeah. drops his burger and his chips, his burger flies onto the pitch. The steward thought that he'd chuck the burger at the steward, and then I think the steward was just fuming. But I don't think he got kicked out. So I, we, Worst thing, we, we, weirdest we thing I've ever seen someone get kicked out for. I do know someone that was in the Ipswich end... Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm not going to call him out for um, certain reasons. Wilmot's Limited. Oh, what a man. What a man. I love this man. Wilmot's Limited. Cut your grass. What's his bio? Wait, go on. Recite it. Recite it. Hit me. Um, oh, in, uh, the Daily Life of... Um, and in, uh, by Wilmot's Limited. <laughs> Sorry, it's Willie Mott's, by it's the Willie way. It's Willie Mott's, yeah. Wilmot's will do. <laughs> Willie Mott's. <laughs> the Daily... <laughs> The daily life of a contract groundsman. Yeah. Come rain or shine, weeds will always outgrow grass. I love that. <laughs> anyway, so Willie Mott's Limited was in the corporate end. <laughs> How did it switch. go, by the way? Right? Hope you like the pics in the corporate. Oh, yeah. You saw the pics in the corporate. Yeah, so he asked last week, how does he wear colour in a box that doesn't allow colour? At Ipswich. He wore his Norwich City socks. Yeah. And a, was it a Norwich City watch or something? I don't know, but it looked classy. Yeah, anyway, he says... Um, Sat behind John Walk, no idea who he is, and then he went on to say, "Also, do we reach the Premier League this year? If we, sorry, if hang on, what is that? I don't really understand your question, Willie Motts. Do we need to reach Premier League this year if we want to keep Madison? Way better than Jacob Murphy. I don't know yes. if you can. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, obviously. But I think, I think we could keep him if we end up in the playoffs. Um, yeah, but I think I think it's too early to say." He's better than Jacob Murphy. Let's not forget, Jacob Murphy was fantastic for us last season. Madison has, of course, scored the better goals. But let's be nice to Jacob. He was OK. Uh, I think, I don't, I, there's been a lot of talk about him leaving in January. I don't think he'd leave in January because I think he knows the fantastic opportunities getting at Norwich City. He's playing week in, week out. He's loved by the fans. Yep. But if we don't go up this season and the form continues from him, then he'll leave in the summer. Yeah. 100%. I've then got not a question, right? So there's this guy on the train uh, um, on the way oh, to Ipswich, mate, and um, legend. so we're singing the Tommy Tribal song, as you do, jumping up and down, you know, <laughs> and he knocks his glasses off, and his glasses break. So the arms of the glasses are snapped, <laughs> and one of the lenses comes out, right? But then he says, "Don't worry, Jack. Don't worry, Chris. I've already bought some tape. I bought some tape with me to fix them." So there's this guy. 
fixing up his specs, right? And rather than tweet us a question tonight, he's literally just sent us, you won't be able to see it. So, <laughs> at Danny, Danny Reg Jackson. Jackson has just put latest update on the glasses fixed with a picture of his spec. So well done, So basically, Danny the frames had already broken, like here. They were smashed to smithereens. <laughs> so he just solid taped them together. To be fair, I almost lost mine when we scored against them. Um, when, when Madison scored and, and if you've not watched the match day, match day experience what are you doing because it's the most epic of the season and you'll see how bonkers I went at the Madison goal um, Elliot Warfield there he is classic, classic question from Elliot should we be worried uh, how good Madison has been playing no some big teams will be sniffing around in January big teams uh, of course we've already covered this haven't we Jack they it's- will be sniffing but will he go I think we'd be stupid to let him go. Unless, of course, it's ridiculous money, but I, I just can't see it happening. I think it's... We'd get more money from him at the end of the season. You want big clubs sniff around your players, because if yeah. they're not, then they're not performing yeah. well. Um, I think it's almost a case of... I'm putting out there, he won't leave in January. The man's too clever to leave in January, yeah. unless we get off about £40 million. Pounds yeah. And then take it and, 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 and buy... Don't take it. Just don't down. take it. Make a statue of him. Joe Denton, who, by the way, has just put a... I think he's changed his picture, because um, I do relatively know this guy from Twitter. Picture of him with a huge beer. Love it. So good love old Joe up, Denton. Joe. Clap up for you as well. Um, are you going to clap every question tonight? Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, I love that. Um, if we score a 90-plus min winner at Arsenal, will Fark one-up the Hull celebration, run across the pitch and crowd surf near way end? Imagine, Quite possibly. Imagine the scenes if he did. And <laughs> you know there was a lot of people coming off that. Probably will. He'll definitely take his Parker off. Yeah, Parker and his Parker. Um, you know we were talking about if we score a ninetieth minute winner against Ipswich, will we survive? Yeah, I only just survived the derby at the weekend. My, just full stop. After, you had a moment in the first half where you were like, I feel really ill because I hadn't eaten since like no, six no, you in the morning. Had eaten. That was not an excuse. You went, you turned around to me and went, Jack, I'm going to be sick. And I went, I was like, mate, you'll be all right. And then about 70 minutes, we're one nil up. Yeah, then, what did I say to you as soon as I finished my bacon bat? You're like, I'm better now. I'm in. I'm and then I, but after 70 minutes, I just had this overwhelming sensation go through my body. And I was like, I think I'm dying. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember. We literally just swapped. Anyway, um, Joe, yeah, love the question. Um, yeah, big F- up to you. FPL dummies. Big up to FPL dummies. If Norwich and James Madison were in the Premier League, how much would he be worth on fantasy? I play more fantasy football than you, Jack, so yeah. I'm going to call it 9.5 million. Don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't play fantasy football. I always forget to this, do it. West Brom have come in with another question, but sorry, we just don't care about West Brom. Um, oh, we do. That's harsh. No, it's not. Okay. Um, how is Pritchard going to fit into this team when he comes back from injury, says at... Max Bovril 25. We'll we'll contact the FA and ask if we can have 12 players on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he fits in, but he, he's got to fit in somehow. Well I, tell you, well, I tell you for one, Wes is a winger isn't ideal. No, no, that, that that's not ideal. So, But then it means you've probably got to drop Madison. No. Well, where'd you put him then? Because we're not bloody dropping Yannick, I can tell you that now. We're, we're going to have to put him up front with Nelson, aren't we? Going to have to play three or at the back. Or just do a Steeperman and stick him in left no, no, back no, no, or something. No, no, Play three at the back. Play Pritch up top with Nelson. <laughs> right, anyway. There's your, there's I don't know question. how he fits in, but um, we'll, we'll, Farker knows. Dom Ellis. Who, Dom Ellis. Who, who, at, Woo! At underscore, sorry, at Dom underscore Ellis 95. Who never gives the ball away? Oh, oh, hey, oh. Super Tommy Tribal. tribal. Oh, oh, hey, oh. He is, is a man for my show. Oh, oh, hey, oh. oh. He never, he never gives, gives the, the ball, ball away. Dom Ellis, by the way, I think, yeah, Dom Ellis. Do you know the boy? I think he's an absolute legend of the game. He was, he was on all the videos. I think he yeah, was actually on the ITV Angle coverage. Dom Ellis, just, he just loves it. Um, here we go. What is Madison's transfer value right now? Says at Gregor's with a Z. Honestly, P seven thirty million. Thirty million. English, yeah. Overvalued, yeah. Young, young. Put that overvalue up a bit more. Yeah. How much did Redmond goals? go for in the end again? It's not much. I think all, it's about 10, it? I think. He's got to be triple the value of Redmond, isn't he? You know what? 40 million. Just, just... Come on then. Liverpool. <laughs> now offer that. Go on. Dare you. Yeah, and Tottenham. Because you missed the boat last time. Um, We've got Madison. 
Norwich City Central. Woo! Big up Norwich City Central. Come on. How many... God, I'll tell you what the people yeah, that listen sorry. today are going to be sorry, furious of you. How many goals will Madison score this season? In brackets, PS, plug my channel since you have with everyone else. Please need the help. Wink face emoji. Much love. Norwich City Central, pay pay the, pay the fee and, and we'll and we'll and we'll big you up even yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. How many goals will Madison score this season? Who knows? But Ten. He's, he's now a top goal scorer, isn't he? He's about he scored now. four. Or is he level with Nelson? Four, now? I think. Lack of knowledge. Four? Who cares? He'll score ten. I think he'll score more. Okay, good. I think you're looking at twelve. Good. <laughs> Dave Giles. Oh, Dave Giles. Oh no, <laughs> he's, not, oh. He's, he's not actually asking a question. He's just commenting about Bradley Snadden's burger. Oh, okay, um, fair enough. Still, Dave, love you. Now this is an interesting one. A little dig from Lewis Fuller. Oh, epic, Lewis twenty five. Opinions on Yannick, time for Chris to restrict his comments about him. Wink face emoji. Um, what about Yannick? Don't, don't restrict. I'm not going to restrict my comments ever on anyone because I'm not. Um, because I'm completely Norwich City biased and I passionately care about this club and the players. Um, Yannick played extremely well at the weekend, but his final product was still lacking. Argue against me. Quite I quickly. have a 100% bias towards Yannick Vujic because I love him. And uh, even if he has a bad game, I'm not going to say he's had a bad game because it's Yannick Vilsch. I get what you mean, though. I get where Lewis is coming from, though, because I, you know, I did criticise Yannick. But to be fair, he was excellent against Ipswich, but he still liked final product, which is the only thing I said that was bad about him. Yeah. So, cool. um, Carl at Guna2009 oh, underscore 29. Carl. Keeping the Barkley stand safe since whenever he started. What a ledge. Hello, guys. Comma. Do you think Norwich can overturn Arsenal at the Emirates? Score prediction. I'm going 4-3 to Arsenal. Smiley face emoji. Uh, Yes, we can. Score prediction. 2-1 Norwich. Late winner from Yannick Vilschke. Um, Probably won't start. 3-2 Norwich. No, I know who's going to score the winner. I know who's scoring the winner. Grant Hanley. No, 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 no. 3-2 Norwich. 90 plus 5 minute winner from James Husband. Pile driver into the top right. See you later. And then all the plastic half and half scarf fans sitting in the Norwich end can um, enjoy that. Um, I've just got a tweet from Puntino. He's ah, from a John long, Punt. From, from a long come nodge. Will Chris Revo go full partridge and hold Alan aloft on Saturday? I love that. Along come Norwich have got the... Back of the um, net. They've, they've officially got their flags approved for the lower Barkley. They've got their poles and they're very... They're very passionate about their polls, the Lancome Norwich Yacht Not so well done. Partridge More, on polls. Uh, by the way, I need to make a comment about this away from Twitter questions. I'm getting a lot of notifications from porn accounts, Jack. <laughs> because you know how well the Angus Gun competition went down? Yeah. It's basically now on a point where porn accounts just keep retweeting, keep retweeting, keep favouriting. It's getting mad. Apologies to all the under 18s listening to right all now. Of, to all of the to the to all of the porn um what do you call them? Porn you actors? Can't, you can't clap. <laughs> you can't um, clap bots. The Angus Gun shirt's gone. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. You can't have it. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, here we go. I'm sure there's a few more. Scrolly, scrolly. What felt... Right. At Harmer underscore Jasper. All right. Are you going to clap? Oh. Big up. Jasper Harmer. What felt better? The playoff semi-final win versus ITFC or the playoff final win versus Borrow? In what ways did you... Did each bring you joy? Uh, I love them both. End of. I think the final was a little bit sweeter because I didn't expect to win it as much. Whereas with Ipswich, you just knew it was going to be... I have said it a few times before. I don't think I'm ever going to have a feeling as good in my life again as when Redmond scored against Borough. Just, I'd lost sense of everything. (laughs) And it was just the moment. Felt like a dream, didn't it? 45,000... Norwich City fans erupted yeah. straight after Jerome scoring. Sea of yellow and green. I lost my head, I lost my seat, and I lost my dignity. You lost your dignity, did you? I don't, I don't there know. There was a I moment that possibly. I had uh, against Ipswich the weekend, Jack, when Madison scored, because it was Madison. And I just just put my hands up to the sky and just, just like breathed in mm. the good vibes. And mm. I just just couldn't. Mm. I didn't know where I was. I, that. I did, I didn't know where I was. Do you ever get that feeling when people you... chase glory. that kind of high, that glory through illegal substances <laughs> on many, many times? Of which we need to talk about illegal substances. Hang on, do we? <laughs> yeah, we do. And that high can be found through Madison, through James Madison, <laughs> and goals. I mean, wow. And um, speaking of illegal substances, <laughs> big up Michael Bailey for handling. 
a fantastic comment. Um, it, was it in the pub before the game? And uh, the bloke. Oi, Metcalf! How do we how do we celebrate a Derby Day win with excessive alcohol and cocaine? <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> went ro- went viral. Fair play. Anyway, um, here we go. Oh Charlie Scoop at Soppy thirteen. Ah, oh, Soppy. Woo! Madison went to Scotland, and look at him now. Does that make you reassess the Scottish game? Question mark. Many good players start there. More for Chris. Many great players. Like keep up the good work, chaps. See you in Leeds. And I think he's a Leeds fan. Big up Leeds. As as you know, I've always respected. Big Leeds. up Leeds. Well done, Leeds. Um, Anyway, do I respect the Scottish game? I've seen a few games now because um, I've got family up there and watch Celtic play Motherwell, watch them play Norwich when Grant Holt scored the winner in a pre-season friendly. Uh, seen them play Hearts as well and it's absolute shite. It's League One standard football and the fact that Celtic aren't in the Premier League, in my opinion, is a joke because I personally am of the opinion that Swansea and Cardiff should not be allowed in the English leagues if Celtic and Rangers aren't. But there you go, that's just my opinion on that. Anyway... Kyle oh, Lafferty scored at the weekend. Yeah, well done, Kyle. Well done. Um, at Parfit 2002... Parfit, well done, my friend. Would you rather be in a bigger stadium with a worse atmosphere, a smaller stadium with ba- better atmosphere, or stay the same as it is now? Stay the same. Yeah, agreed. Love Car Road. Um, Although the atmosphere would be good if it was better. There we go. Obviously. Let's get some more. Just someone. So stay. many questions. Big up to everyone. Nick Britcher just says, "Bloody love life." Yeah, fair <laughs> play. Um, love that. Um, yeah, loads of people commenting about Angus Gunn and his celebration with the arms out, which is fantastic. Um, who is more crucial to the team? This is from at T. 92 BR Rovers. Some Bristol Rovers fan that just keeps asking questions. and Love it. I really do. And by the way, quite a few people now are commenting on the YouTube video saying, I'm converting to a Norwich fan. Mm. I've got a soft spot for, for, for Norwich now. And so well done, mate, for doing that. Um, who's Thanks. more crucial to the team? Tribal or Madison? Ooh, good question. I, do, you, do you want... Ooh, good question. I think it's a, I think it's a brilliant question. I think, do yeah. you know what I think? Yeah, go Tom Tribal. I think he is more important. I think Madison could... No, he, he couldn't be replaced, but... Pritchard. I think in the modern game, it's a lot harder to find a player like Tom Tribal. And I... Look, we had Madison in the team when things were going tits up at the start of the season. Tom okay. Tribal came in. Okay. Look, they're both crucial... But I think Tom Tribal is a little bit more yeah. crucial. Let's keep going. Some references to Ipswich's stars. And that's it from the Twitter questions. Good work, Chris. Was that okay? I don't know. Brilliant. Anyway, well done. You've Thanks for the questions. You've got the job. Thank you. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Can we just talk about that win against Ipswich again, Jack? Just very briefly. For another hour. Although, well done if you've got this far. How many minutes are we in? Can you see from here, Jack? I think we're about an hour in now. An hour 50 in. minutes. Congrats, guys, for getting this far. And I just want to say to everyone that went at the weekend, woke up early, got the train down, didn't eat properly, couldn't get served beer at the, within the stadium. By the way, the scenes before the game... I don't know oh, what yeah. I need to say. <clears throat> I'm just going to change the conversation completely because I can. The little boy that was starting the chance that you saw in the match day experience, hopefully you've seen it anyway, he was literally starting the chance in the concourse before the game. The, con- the back. concourse is where boys become mm. men. I think he it, is a man. It just reminded me of when I first started watching Norwich with my old man. It just filled me with immense pride. Did it? Yeah, the, I support Norwich. That's a family club. And I love it how he had a... He had a bobble hat. <coughs> yeah, fair play. He can he do what he wants. He was boiling hot in there. He had a bobble Same hat. Saying that, so did Hong Kong Dave. Big up, HK Dave. Big up. Um, no, I, I, anything else to say? Or We're the pride of Anglia. I just want to say that moments like <clears throat> that at the weekend are why we Wheels support Norwich. our wonderful football club. Yeah. And Let's not forget it. And, and, and then moments that if you were at the ground, if you weren't at the ground... If you're watching the game, whoever you celebrated that goal with, whoever you spent that day with, memories for a lifetime. Mate. Mate. 
Memories for a lifetime. <sighs> Mate, I'm actually getting a bit emotional now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Genuinely. That was special. That was special. It will, that really was special. No, that no, was. But I agree, and the EDP put an out, out an article of the people in the pub just hugging mm, each other. Mm. This is getting a bit You are emotional. actually crying. This is getting a bit emotional now. I'm getting a bit wet-eyed. It's just fantastic. Just lovely. Daniel Farker. Should we, should we just finish on the top, on the Tom Tribal song? No, not again. My, my, my friend, Why not? My, my, I can't genuinely we? don't Jack, think I Jack, come on. Let's finish on the Tom Tribal song. No, no, you can if you want, but I'm not. I, listen to me. Hear me. Hear the pain in my voice. Onwards and upwards, city. My friends, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you listen on iTunes, rate the uh, podcast. Do whatever you want. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> Live the dream. <laughs> See you later.